In negotiations, we want to bring in Representative Bill Hazenga, Republican from Michigan, who serves on the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, Congressman, thanks for giving us some time this morning. We, uh, we appreciate it. Good morning. Good to be with you. What do you uh, expect uh, from this uh, high-stakes meeting uh, today? Do you see any, any uh, daylight here? Can they get this done, or are we in for a long May? Well, uh, I, I hope so. Uh, look, frankly, this should have happened a while ago. Uh, we've known that this date was coming. It did get moved up to, uh, to June 1st, according to Janet Yellen. Uh, but at the same time, the principle holds true, just like it was in 2011, when I first came in uh, as a freshman and Joe Biden was leading the, uh, the negotiations for the Obama administration and Eric Cantor was, uh, was uh, negotiating on the House Republican side. Uh, this is how it works in split government. You know, for the last four years, or I'm sorry, for the last two years, uh, there has been unified government. And frankly, we have been on a spending spree. We collectively, not me specifically or a lot of my colleagues, but Congress has been on a spending spree. And it's time to have this tough negotiation and tough conversation about what is going to be happening in the future. You mentioned spending. Um, a common refrain from the Democrats on this issue is that these are two separate issues. There's government spending and then there's the government debt, which is the bills you've already racked up. Um, as Kevin explained in his, his piece, there have been changes to the debt ceiling dozens of times. I think it was near 80 times. Uh, it was, the debt ceiling was lifted three times during the Trump administration alone. Uh, what is your uh, message on those who say these should be two separate issues, that you take care of spending when it's time for spending, yeah and then the debt when it's time for the debt. Yeah, let me be clear. Uh, I've had this experience, unfortunately, way more than I would have liked to in my uh, 12 years here in Congress. And I have voted for debt ceiling increases, and I voted against them. And my criteria personally has been, do I see modification and reform in our spending practices? And if I see that, then I am happy to, to, to vote for that, uh, for that debt ceiling increase. But think of this. I mean, think about a business partner who went on a spending spree, or maybe better yet, your kid going on a spending spree and you have a responsibility to pay that credit card off but you also have a responsibility to modify the spending habits right and that's exactly where the point is right here and it's been the point in a lot of the other previous negotiations yes we have obligations that have been racked up I would again argue that that was mostly under uh, unified government over the last couple of years in fact 568 billion dollars more than last year uh, in, in this fiscal year uh, has been racked up. So we're, at, we're talking a trillion dollars of additional deficit spending in just this past fiscal year. Um, and and it's, un, it's untenable. So we have to do something about that side of the equation as well as just purely paying those bills. We've got to have that conversation about how we are not going to get into this situation again. Let me just con let me continue that metaphor for a second in terms of kids with a credit card. If my kid went out and racked up yeah. a big bill uh, that and clearly I didn't like it <laughs> and I get that maybe every parent's been there at some point I would say you know what yeah we have to talk about your spending but first I need to pay off this credit card because if I don't you're gonna get late and get penalties and that stays on your credit report for seven years and that's gonna damage your ability to get a loan or buy a home or a car or what have you so let me pay that off for you and then let's sit on the kitchen table and talk about your spending habits because certainly you have to understand the risk the damage from, from letting the problem go on too far. So it does yeah. beg the question again, why conflate the two issues? The credit card bill is one thing, your future so spending is another. Yep. So to, to, to continue with the analogy, uh, but is that the same conversation sitting at the kitchen table? Or do you wait a week? Or do you wait a month? Or do you wait half a fiscal year before you have that conversation again? Right? To me, those are joined conversations, separate actions, but joined conversations about the future of where we are going. And let's be also very, very clear. Nobody wants this to happen. Nobody, Republican, Democrat, none of my colleagues that I've talked to actually want us to, to get to this point of default. I don't believe it will happen. I do believe that there will be accommodation and we've got to have adults sitting at that table and, with, and making those decisions and be serious minded. I know that Kevin McCarthy and the House Republicans by, by uh, passing our Limit, Save and Grow Act demonstrated 
actually demonstrated that we are serious and serious minded about this. We've seen nothing out of Chuck Schumer and nothing out of this White House that would indicate they want to do anything other than just pay the bills and yeah, we'll work out the rest of it later. Sure, right, just like it's been done before. That's the problem is, is there is no serious minded fiscal restraint happening out of this White House. But the U.S. House controls the nation's purse strings. You could, you could, you could hold yep. up the budget as long as you want and not approve whatever the White House wants. There are, there are other avenues to get to the same thing other than putting sure. America's credit yeah. at risk and in the global we're economy. Standing here having, sure, we're going to be standing here having the conversation. Why did the Republicans shut down government? Right. I mean, I've, I've lived through this before, so I have seen this, uh, and, and that's why we, it is important to have a broader conversation that encompasses both, acknowledges the responsibility that we have of paying the bills, absolutely, but it also acknowledges the responsibility that we have to make sure that we modify our behavior and go in a different direction. And by the way, this invoking the 14th Amendment and you know, minting a platinum coin or all these other things that were explored back in 2011, uh, talk about a constitutional crisis. That would even you know, exasperate it even more so. Well, we certainly hope you guys can figure out something because the economic cost of this could just be simply disastrous yep. and that affects everyone. Michigan Congressman Bill Huizinga, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks everybody, appreciate it. Lindsay.